month down to you know October and it starts to become Halloween and I thought you know what I totally want an office that is surrounded by paranormal haunted stuff but the only time of year that I can buy it is now so finally I got to go shopping and what do you guys think of all the cool stuff in the background what's up guys welcome back to my channel and welcome to my new setup it's not totally complete yet I'm still purchasing pieces but as you can see behind me we have the really cool haunted sign we have the Ouija sign which I think is awesome it's my crystal ball to tell the future just kidding it's actually just my pet raven I got this guy and can you guys see my cool pet raven on this side? So highly requested forever is the review of what I think of Ghost Hunters. So this is going to be a little complicated because I'm going to break it down from Ghost Hunters into the spin-offs, into another show that the same production company did. So as we all know, Ghost Hunters started or premiered in 2005 on the Sci-Fi Channel. We also know Grant and Jason as our handy dandy plumbers that just in case you have a ghost in your sewage system, they can unblock that. We also know that Grant quit the series in 2014 uh, basically to stay home with his family. I think he just kind of missed being with his family. Grant and Jason are both producers on the series, I believe, because they are the founders. And I do know that they had been contacted numerous times over the years to actually start this show or series. They turned the offer down several times because I don't think they were really wanting to turn it into like a money-making business. I think they were just wanting to be ordinary guys doing plumbing and then having their hobby as well. Ghost Hunters has been on for so long, so many years. And uh, I mean, you know, the, every show has like a theme, right? Like. Um, you know, Zack is kind of aggressive, or at least he was in the beginning, and he's all about kind of being authentic and raw. And then Ghost Hunter's thing is debunking. I agree, I think debunking is totally appropriate, especially when you're, you know, ghost hunting and investigating. However, sometimes I feel like they debunk too much. They premiered around the same time, give or take, as Ghost Adventures. Um, and I think that everybody saw Ghost Adventures and... You know, all of them came out with such big personalities. In the beginning, it was just Aaron, Nick, and Zach. And then you compare it to, like, Grant and Jason, and, I mean, they have, you know, they're philosophical, or they're thought thinkers, and, and you know, they're really, um, they want to think things out before, and they want to debunk, and they want to look at, it's not just paranormal, it's a squeaky floorboard, and, you know, stuff like that. But I feel like, really quickly they turned kind of boring when we were introduced to Ghost Adventures. They have been under the spotlight, you know, under the heat for, um, you know, claiming that they faked a couple of things here and there. If that was accurate, I don't know personally, but I would never blame Grant and Jason. I would blame the production company if there was anything fake involved. You guys have to remember there's a really big difference between being an executive producer and a producer and even being either of those versus a cast member. Executive producers are the ones that fund the entire project. Usually all of the money is coming from the executive producer. So the EPs pay for travel, they pay for stay, hotels during investigations, they pay for car rentals, they pay for airline tickets. They even give you per diem per day, which is usually somewhere around $100 to $140. Plus they're paying you for the salary if there is a salary usually in the beginning or first to three seasons your salary isn't going to be that big if you're just cast or even a producer and the reason that is is they want to make sure it doesn't fail usually the first three it's called the three season hump if you can't get past the third season 
and you fail, the executive producers don't want to waste all their money basically producing a failed show. So cast members are really at the bottom of the totem pole, especially in something like reality or documentary film, as far as being paid. If anyone faked anything, it wouldn't have had anything to do with Grant and Jason. Um, they were just two plumbers that decided to do this. And um, if something was faked, it probably was in result to the production company or even the network wanting higher ratings. That's the one thing that I've always appreciated about Zach Bagans and like from working on set with him. Yes, we did find out that on Deadly Possessions that he's not really paying anybody to come and talk or at least some people he's not paying. But I do know from working with him like nothing's ever been faked. He's even produced shows on Travel Channel where he just hasn't had a lot of evidence and he's just been honest and upfront about it. So that tells me that the Travel Channel and Zach's production company are not being pressured or he's not pressuring himself as executive producer to fake stuff. The next two big uh, casts that were a part of Ghost Hunters would have been Amy Brunei and Adam Berry, and they actually did not renew their contracts with the production company in 2014. There was a rumor circulating online that Adam and Amy both were fired from Ghost Hunters. However, they did set the record straight, saying that it was there was a lot of reasons behind that. Now, they had a couple other spinoffs from the same production company because of the success of Ghost Hunters. Ghost Hunters International, and probably the biggest star we all know from there is Chris Williams. She was considered the case manager. Chris Williams was on from 2007 until 2011. UFO Hunters came out next. It was not a highly popular show. Ghost Hunting Academy came out last, and that's where we got to know Michelle Tate. And Michelle was actually hired for Ghost Hunters later on. She was on Ghost Hunters from 2013 to 2014 and announced that she would be, I don't know if she went back to school for law enforcement or if she was going into the police academy, but it was one of those. And just recently, it was announced by Amy Brunei that her and Adam will be coming back doing a new series called Kindred Spirits. We don't really have a whole lot of information on that. I know they're either filming or they just wrapped up filming. So whenever we get more information on that, I actually think I heard it's supposed to premiere soon, so I'll keep an eye out for that for you guys. So we have a definite interesting correlation here. The three most popular females in the paranormal, Amy Brunei, Chris Williams, and Michelle Tate. Why are all the females quitting or leaving Ghost Hunters? Remember what I said earlier about how much executive producers make, how much producers make, and then how much cast makes. Remember, these guys are not getting paid to be actors. They're getting paid to be basically themselves on camera, which means it's minute. It's a very small amount. Amy Brunei actually announced on her blog that they were having financial difficulties with her salary through Ghost Hunters, and that was one of the reasons that she left the show. Chris Williams is no longer in uh, Paranormal. It looks like she's actually into politics. I don't follow her very closely. However, it seems like there may have been some sort of negative beef going on between her and the production company. And Michelle Tate was only on from 2013 to 2014, which was very tiny. She basically quit. She was hired to be on a ghost hunting show that's very famous and went back to either school or for law enforcement. So the question is, if every one of these girls has their dream job, why are they no longer there? I'm going to get into this a little bit later, but I was actually hired through this production company for another series. They do not believe that women or females can be successful in this industry, and they only believe in dominant males succeeding in the ghost hunting paranormal industry. Which is quite unfortunate, because you know, no one's really had... Uh, no female has really had the chance to shine or to uh, prove otherwise. I believe personally that um, Chris Williams was probably treated the worst out of all of them. It's, um, you know, film in general and Hollywood in general, because I've worked in it, and, and I mean, you guys probably know big actresses like, like Jennifer Lawrence just came out not too long ago talking about when she was in movies with Bradley Cooper, how much difference her salary was versus the men's salary and how unfair it was. I don't really want to get into like a feminism talk because I don't want to get off topic here. But I will say that this production company is definitely known for putting women on the bottom of the totem pole, no matter what their title is. 
I think at some point all three of these girls got tired of having a very low salary considering they are on the road all the time working your way up in seniority not getting you know the dues that you should be paid for after all of the time and effort and energy spent and they end up leaving I would love to see Chris Williams come back um, I think she's awesome and uh, I wish someday I could even get to work with her who knows what do I actually think of Ghost Hunters and any of these series for that matter? I'm not the biggest fan and it's only because I don't know how they all stay so composed. I mean, some of them do have like the reactions, but there's been times where I get really scared and like scream. Like you guys have probably seen me in some of the episodes that I have posted on YouTube. And I just feel like they are a little bit stoned. There's not like a whole big personality there. And I've told you guys this before, to be on TV and be on one of these shows, like you're not presented as an actor or someone else, you're presented as yourself. And if you don't have something that's big and, and you know, that makes you stand out, people aren't going to remember you. And you have to be different and you have to be, you know, somewhat intriguing for the audience. And I didn't really, I mean, Amy, I'm so glad she's coming back. I think Adam Berry is awesome. I'm happy to see him come back. Really, really wish that um, Chris Williams could, could come back at some point. I think that she just got really burnt out, just from what I can tell with her social media. I think that um, working for that production company left kind of a bad taste in her mouth. I'm just not the biggest Ghost Hunters fan. I just find it boring, and that's just the truth. Okay, this is the first time um, that I'm talking about this publicly, <sighs> because it's shameful. All right, Killer Contact premiered in December of 2013 on Sci-Fi. It is made by the same production company that Ghost Hunters is made by. So remember everything I just said previously. I was cast for Killer Contact, and um, in 2012, 2013, I was back and forth in Los Angeles. That's actually what started my, um, my career in production. At some point or another, the production company had watched um, my episode with Zach Bagans, and the production company got a hold of me and um, asked me to come out and basically audition as myself for this um, this new series. I'll get into that in a minute. Let's meet the cast, shall we? Let's meet Austin, the Point Man, A.K.A. the lead investigator. Mr. Greg, you may recognize Mr. Greg from Paranormal Challenge. Greg was on the episode uh, La Parisima, I believe is how it's pronounced in Southern California. If you don't remember Greg, he was the one that claims that he thought he pooped himself because he got so scared. Oh, so if anybody wants to know what to buy Greg for Christmas, it could be some men's depends. Greg's title, The Antagonizer. Hector, the tech guru. How do you guys know Hector? Come on, I know you guys know who Hector is. He was on my episode of Paranormal Challenge. He was on the other team, uh, Sagaps from Arizona. Um, my team won. <sighs> Sorry, just had to throw that in there. <sighs> Hector was the tech guru. He was supposed to invent schmancy stuff for each investigation. Mr. Adam is the brain. He's just the smarty pants. He's the brain of the group. And Molly, last but not least, is the role player. Where did they go to investigate? They went to investigate Jack the Ripper, um, Vlad the Impaler. They went to Italy, they went to Health Fire Club, and one other last place. If I was offered to be on a show or a series, why would I quit? Well, that's a really good question. Um, this layout of cast was actually not the original cast that was chosen, obviously. I was included in the original cast. There were two people in this group that were replaced. There was another gentleman um, that was supposed to be in this and he had very, very little, little paranormal experience. Actually, to be bluntly honest, Hector from Paranormal Challenge, myself and Greg were the only ones that had an, an extensive background in paranormal investigating. I had um, had a chat with the production company because I was going to have a really hard time being led by another investigator 
that had very, very little experience, ex especially compared to myself. Is that me saying that I was offended, that I was not cast as the lead investigator? No, that's not what I'm saying. I, I didn't care about that role or that title in particular, but I just believe in paranormal investigating that you should respect your elders. And I don't mean that as in, um, older people, well, older people, of course, too, but when someone has more experience than you, I just feel like there's a tier system. And I was gonna have a really hard time dealing with somebody that had little to no experience, but yet they were the lead investigator and they were calling the shots. I definitely uh, knew that I was not going to be the lead investigator on that series because this company does not believe in um, a female taking the lead, or at least they didn't at the time. That wasn't my issue. I just thought that if they were gonna cast someone in the lead position, they better know what they're doing. I got to hang out with Greg and Hector at that time before um, the filming actually started. And Hector and Greg, uh, you know, all of us were kind of chuckling since this production company had basically fished us out of the water from um, Zach Bagans was the one that cast us. and. In order to be cast for Paranormal Challenge, it was pretty extensive. Like, you needed to prove your time as investigators through footage. Um, you needed to really know your knowledge as far as vocabulary. They didn't want anybody that was new coming in there because they were really concerned that, um, you know, Zach didn't want to have people on his show that didn't know what they were doing. He didn't want to have a crappy product in the end. So when we were being cast for Paranormal Challenge, I mean, it was not a quick process. And we had to submit photos and we had to do video calls and video chats. And um, so, I mean, it was, it was a really hard process. And I really feel like that's how Hector, Greg and I were chosen because people knew Zach did his job, if you know what I'm saying, and other people were kind of too lazy to do theirs. So I think they knew by casting people that had already been cast and already had a background, um, they didn't have to prove it. They didn't have to do the extensive work that Zach did. So once again, that shows Zach's knowledge and production knowledge um, as far as not casting people that are inexperienced or um, that know little to nothing. One of the reasons I quit was because I was going to have a really hard time taking orders from a lead investigator that had never been in any investigations. The second reason I quit was because of Greg. When I was in Los Angeles, um, you know, basically doing preliminary stuff with the production company, getting ready for filming, um, we were trying to get to know each other and, and the production company wanted us to get to know each other as a cast. And obviously, yes, Greg had been on Paranormal Challenge, but I had never worked with him directly. He is, um, you know, a lot of people make fun of Zach Bagans for the first few episodes or first few seasons, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, that Zach was very um, aggressive, too aggressive, offensive. Um, you know, Zach admits that one of the reasons that he had to sell his townhouse is it was so haunted, he was getting pulled out of bed at like three and five in the morning. Um, there's just a lot of things. So Zach, I think, grew up and realized that when you provoke like that, you better, you better expect, you know, what you get. Like I've said this before, is if you call for the devil, you know, don't be shocked when he comes knocking. And so when I'm getting to know Greg while I'm in Los Angeles, I'm like, this dude is dangerous. He's like a mini Zach Bagans. He could have changed by now. I mean, that was a couple of years ago, but... Greg was like wanting to provoke and wanting to like Bobby Mackey's come up out of that ground and get us like and I I mean but he was taking it to an extreme level like he was coming up with some ideas and theories and even experiments that were so so out there I could not be a part of it there was one location and, and I can't remember where it was I don't think they ended up going there the production company found a haunted spot and uh, it was where there were suicides that had been notoriously committed over and over by, um, by hangings. And Greg's idea had been to provoke basically by using ropes and pretending like you were hanging and calling them cowards and, and provoking in that way to get them out. And you know what? I just thought it was like so disrespectful, honestly. Like I just, 
Um, I mean, that just shows uh, how, it shows me how long that I've been doing it versus how long they've been doing it. I've admitted to you guys that I did provoke and I did some wrong things on set in Jerome, Arizona when Travel Channel was there. And um, I reaped the consequences for it. I mean, I told you I got followed home back to the hotel that night. It was really rough. And uh, I think until you get followed home or something really bad happens to you after you provoke and you're a dumbass, then you realize that that was a really big mistake. And you're messing with things that you can't see, feel, or touch. Um, so if you want to mess with shit that you don't know is there and you can't see, and then you can't handle it afterwards, don't do it. And I think it really takes that that time to, to realize it. I have a reason for provoking on Travel Channel set with Zach. And not that it's the right reason, but we were in competition with SAG apps. As the lead investigator, I knew that if I provoked, I would get the, the best evidence. And I wanted to win. Um, no other time have I provoked. No other time would I ever provoke. It's not the right thing to do. I got followed home. I was terrorized that night by something. Actually, the next time I went back to Jerome to film, when I was just with my team, I went through the hotel and the old hospital and apologized to everything for acting the way I did. I wanted, it, I wanted them to know that I was sorry and it was disrespectful and I should have never done it. And I never have done it since. So when I was on set in LA and hearing Greg say these things like, provoking these entities that are dead, you know, like you don't, when you've been an experienced investigator, you come to terms to realize after you get evidence that most of the time, the most common thing that you're gonna run into is that these entities don't know that they're dead. They have no idea that they crossed over. Um, they don't remember committing suicide. They don't remember dying. So why would you go in somewhere and provoke and call them cowards and reenact their death and, and you know it's it's really disrespectful i go into investigations or haunted locations and treat those entities as if what if it was my uncle or what if it was my dad or what if it you know what i mean like um what if if my cousin passed away and i went in and and provoked this person like there is dark stuff out there mark my word there's dark stuff out there but you're not going to run into it very often so why would you go in aggressive like that when you don't know what's there? It's, it's unfair, it's unprofessional, and it's disrespectful. Like, we've talked about this before. And I was not, I was absolutely not going to be a part of a team that was going to pursue an image or project an image that way. I did not want to ruin my reputation for what I've worked for, so I quit. It was not easy. Um, it was really rough. Now in the meantime, while I was filming, um, Molly was not there. I did not get to know Molly. She actually, she replaced me. By the way, I had no idea my title was going to be the role player. Um, I got to know Adam really well. And uh, I really wish that Adam would have been portrayed better than he was. And uh, let the record state that Adam is still one of my, one of my great friends to this day. He always will be. Um, I've told Adam that if I ever get my own series, I want him to be a part of it because he he is nerdy. He like he is like he is honestly just he'll admit how nerdy he is, and uh, he has his own persona. But like he had such a bad taste in his mouth from the experience that he went through um, that I don't know if he'll ever come back to television again, which is which is really crappy because. I love that guy, and Adam, if you're out there watching you, I still think you're the shit, and uh, I'm glad that we stay in touch every once in a while. Okay, so anyways, now, after I quit, the original lead investigator was actually released from the company. I don't know why. Um, Austin was not originally cast as the lead investigator. Um, the guy that was cast was let go. I don't know why I wasn't there. Um, so it was weird. So really quickly, they brought in two basic extras that had been on set, um, that had been inter you know interviewed to be a part of the cast. 
And um, so Molly and Austin were brought on after the other lead and myself quit. So let's chat about the characters that they portrayed themselves to be in the series. So Austin comes across as the point man slash lead investigator. Oh man, like I got to know Austin, really cool dude. Um, I think he's from like Kentucky or Tennessee or something like that. Austin wasn't really experienced and he drank the Kool-Aid of this production company. He is the perfect guy that they needed for this production company. Basically anything the production company told Austin to do, he did. And if you guys have watched Killer Contact, man, honestly, you guys, it's terrible. It's a terrible series. It's probably one of the worst series that's ever come out. Uh, they had five episodes. It was canceled after that. Watch it if you get bored. If you're if you're strictly wanting um, a paranormal laugh, watch it. There's an episode that Austin, they're in the Mayan temples down in Mexico, and Austin claims he's having a possession. Obviously, it's fake. Very obviously, it's fake. Greg is in this. Um, he did do some of the provoking... I mean, I have no bad feelings or ill will towards Greg. I hope he's doing great. I just don't agree with the way he investigates. I really feel like it's a lot of like showmanship of like trying to protect, of like trying to portray a mini Zach Bagans. And uh, I mean, whatever floats your boat, bro. Hector. I love Hector. I mean, like, I got to get to know Hector, obviously, a lot because I was on set with him for a week when we were in Jerome, Arizona. And, uh, I mean, Hector is a really good guy. He's a family guy. Um, he's married with kids. And, uh, unfortunately, this production company did not give him the tools that you would need or one would need to be a tech guru. And, like, one of the things they did, I think it was in the Mayan one, was, like, so he like his job was to um, get really cool uh, tech stuff, tech ideas, and like build stuff while they're on set. So while you know these people were going to do interviews and these people were going to set up, Hector's supposed to go find whatever he can to build something really cool for that investigation. And the Mayan one the tech thing that Hector built was like, he put like a digital recorder or something on a floaty inside like a cave where there was water and then they pushed the floaty out and they were hoping to get EVPs. And I mean, I don't know. I mean, the only ghost that I would know that would you'd get an EVP from walking on water would be like Jesus. Adam the brain, all right. Oh man, poor Adam, he got so screwed in this. <laughs> I will tell you guys, seriously, since I know Adam personally, please don't give him shit because he is like the most like honest, open dude. And like he really wanted to, you know, he he was honest when he, in, you know, interviewed with the production company. Um, Adam was like, no, I don't have a lot of experience, but I think this stuff is so cool and awesome. And uh, so please give Adam credit because this wasn't his fault. They did not train any of these guys that didn't know what they were doing well enough. So there's one point that Adam is on screen talking about electromagnetic fields. Who knows what an electromagnetic field is? What's an EMF reading? And he was caught on camera calling it a microwave meter. No, it's not a microwave meter. Adam knows it's not a microwave meter. Oh God. There was a few other mistakes that were like that. Um, if you notice when you're watching Killer Contact, there is a ton of sections where they're talking on film and you can hear the audio, listen to the audio. And then all of a sudden their voice changes into this like clear, crisp piece of audio and they're talking about the same thing. So what that means happened is that while they were investigating or doing the interview or whatever, they're talking and they're engaging in the camera. When they went back to the studio to edit the pieces down, the producers did not like what they said or they didn't say enough. So what they did is they flew the cast back to LA to go in the sound booth and re-record some of the audio and they just dubbed that audio over it. 
So that's why the editing is so bad. You can hear like the muffled audio of like the raw live mod audio and then all of a sudden it's like the crisp talking into a microphone in the sound booth audio. So the editing was, was done, was, was rough too. A lot of other problems in this, if you guys watch it, if you want an example of, of messing up editing and production and ghost hunting, oh, most of the cast is seen with scripts in their hands. No, ruined, ruined, oh my God. <sighs> we all know the intro to Ghost Hunters, is that right? We all know the intro to Ghost Adventures with Zach, right? Or at least the old intro. Now, do you see Zach doing this? I never believed in ghosts until I came face to face with one. You wanna know why that got so messed up? Because ghost hunters and paranormal investigators aren't actors. And if that's what this company needed, they should have freaking hired actors. So there's a reason Adam has paper in his hand. A couple of the other cast members have paper in their hand. It doesn't sound natural. It's not like when you're engaging in the camera, just like when I talk to you guys sitting at home, because they're not actors. They're, they're reading, these are my notes, okay? I, this is what I do. I do these notes for each, um, each video I do for you guys. So like the top here, it says like Grant Jason 2005. This is how it sounded. Grant and Jason 2005 sci-fi. Um, Grant was on from 2004 until 2012. That, that's reading, right? Like, that's just how we read. It's not natural. It's not hosting. It's not talking to the camera. Of course, it's going to sound wrong. And it's going to look even worse when you have the paper right here and you catch the cast member, Ghost Hunter, Paranormal Investigator, reading on camera. <sighs> As Dr. Phil would say. Y'all got some issues. I, I've saved the best for last. Oh God, this hurts physically. It hurts me to talk about this. You wanna know why this hurts to talk about this? Because I could have been Molly. Molly could have been me and I could have ruined my career. Molly, AKA the role player. Oh man, oh man. Way to sexualize a woman, way to drop the female in paranormal lower than she's ever been. Um, oh my god. Molly was, uh, they were at an investigation, it was a Jack the Ripper investigation, somewhere in London, I think it was like a pub, and all of a sudden they bring Molly in and Austin calls her in since he's the lead investigator and Molly is going to wear a dress, a very short skimpy dress, body tight. Um, she's going to wear fishnet hose stockings with platform heels and they're going to put night vision all over her and like a GoPro chest harness I mean, look, I'm not gonna trust a Wikipedia page. I don't have a lot of time, okay? Wikipedia, Jack the Ripper, um, London, 1888. Wait a second. Are you gonna tell me that in London, in 1888, they were wearing fishnet hose, short skirts, and platform heels? Are you gonna tell me that's what prostitutes wore in 1888? In fact, let's Google it. Let's just, let's have fun, let's Google it. This is what the women would have worn. Now, did you guys ever see, um, what was that show with Johnny Depp? Okay, so this is from hell. If you remember any of the scenes from Jack the Ripper. So ha tell me how Molly's outfit versus this is a prostitute from 1888. Somebody please explain to me. A little bit different, a little bit different. My condolences go out to Molly that she was probably talked into that unwillingly, or who knows, maybe she wanted to do it and try to make her big debut. Anyways, oh my God, what if that was me? Do you know what I would have done if somebody asked me to do that? And they asked me to dress up as a prostitute. Oh, by the way, we brought you a change of clothes. You're the role player for a prostitute. What? I don't think so. I don't think so. And on top of that, 
That is like the people that go investigate in like, you know, Mexico or another country and they forget that when these people died, they weren't speaking English. Use a freaking Google translator. My God, seriously, come on, people. I'm not even gonna rant, I'm done. Well, now you can see why I am very grateful that I made the decision that I did. <sighs> I would not be here talking to you guys, that's for sure. I would not have made it to where I am now. So just remember, no matter what, always go with your gut, always go with your instinct, and if you want a good laugh, go watch Killer Contact. I hope you guys enjoyed my video. I love chatting with you guys. Please leave me good comments below. Please give me a thumbs up. Please make sure you've subscribed to my channel if you haven't already. Give me ideas for a new video and I will catch you guys next time. We're back from dead. I'm the dead, 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 dead.